This is part three of the Delta 7-inch motor-driven bench grinder rebuild series. If you haven't seen part two, click the link at the top of the screen. In this video, we're going to continue with the disassembly. Hello everyone, I'm Jeff and welcome to my shop. We got a lot to cover, so let's get to it. Okay, so continuing with the disassembly, we're going to be removing the left bearing housing. The stator band, well, the stator in in general has a weld along the bottom of it and at the edges of that weld it's open and that's what I'm doing here is just using a flat tip screwdriver to start tapping out that bearing housing you can see it moving there and if you finesse it enough you can get it to break loose so once we've got it where it's coming off of the stator, we can start to pry it away a little bit. And part of this is kind of slow going because I don't remember how I took apart the previous Delta grinder, but we'll get it. And it'll actually spin freely. You can see my hand kind of move it there at that point. And I get a little bit smaller of a screwdriver to get a little bit more purchase on it and the reason I'm being kind of careful here is because one side of this bearing housing either the left or the right has the centrifugal switch governor and all of that wired to it so you've got to kind of remove them carefully until you know which side you're dealing with and it looks like this side is uh, completely open there's no wiring in there so we can go ahead and tap that off as much as we can get it and then we'll use a puller to get it the rest of the way here in a minute now I'm just using a brass rod so we're not marring it up so I probably should have mentioned this in the first disassembly video but all these Delta grinders have a lot of similarities, but they're all different. And uh, if you're not do working on the exact same model number as mine, then things are going to be different for you. So I always tell people when you're working on something that you don't have a lot of experience with, to just take some pictures as you're disassembling, and that'll make reassembly so much easier down the road. Anyway, back to the disassembly. Really, the best option here is just to use a puller. And I really didn't think I had an area to be able to connect the puller. But then I thought about, hey, we've got these two socket head screws that we can just screw back in there. And I really should have used some washers on them. That would have made this so much easier. And then we'll just use a, uh, a two prong puller. We'll just hook on those screws and pull it straight up. So washers on those screws would have given me more purchase, but in any case, this worked just fine. It's been so long since I worked on my other Delta grinder I don't even remember how I did half the stuff I did with it. And you can see the bearing housing is just lifting straight up there. And that's where the bearing clears the shaft. So now we can just lift it off of there. There we go. I'll pull those two screws back out of it. So the only thing we got left on that piece there is just to get the bearing out of there. And we'll do that in a minute. And you can probably hear my dog barking in the background. So it would be great if we could just lift this rotor straight out of the uh, stator at this point, but 
Yeah, that's not going to happen. So we just need to uh, get the right side bearing housing off. And I'm going to kind of mess around with this small chisel for a minute here and see if we can get a gap going between the bearing housing and the stator. And sure enough, there we go. Now I'm definitely going to be careful with this side because I know for sure there is wiring in there. So as I start to expose the inside, I'm looking down in there to see if I can't see the screws that are mounting that uh, switch to the inside of the bearing housing. There's a little bit better picture of it. And if I fish these two wires that are coming through the stator back into there a little bit, it'll give me a little bit more wiggle room. Sorry, my pumpkin's in the way. So, offset screwdrivers. If you don't have a set of these, they're real cheap. And I'd highly recommend them, especially if you're going to work on tight, confined areas like this. So, I worked on this for... I don't know, probably half an hour trying to get this done. And here we are still working on it. There's one screw. I'm trying to just get it where I can see the screws. And another 30 minutes later, and we've got all of this stuff disconnected now. And we've been marking the wiring. So I ended up cutting the wiring as far away from the stator as possible. That way I don't have to worry about trying to splice a piece of wiring on one of those lead wires right at the stator. So here we've got the switch and you can see I've got all the screws out of it so it's just sitting in there loose. And we've got the rotor still in there. So what I'm looking at right now is on my other Delta grinder there are two screws that are inside that bearing housing that hold the bearing in place. And I just wanted to make sure they weren't in there. So to remove the rotor, we're just going to go ahead and do kind of the same thing we did for the other bearing housing. And we'll just push the rotor through the back of the bearing housing with a puller and those two screws again. I guess another way to say that is we're going to be pulling the bearing housing off of the rotor. But it's really just pushing the rotor out the backside. And again, putting washers on those two uh, socket head screws will make this a lot easier. It just didn't occur to me at the time. Sometimes I just get so focused on what I'm doing, I don't look for uh, how to improve that or make it more efficient. I'm just trying to get it all lined up. Once I did... We can start turning it off of there. And I think one of, yep, one of the sides came off of the uh, screw. And I think by that point I realized washers would have made it easier, but we're already here, so let's just get it done.
So there we go. So you can see the bearing sitting in there. We'll pull those two socket head screws out of it. Set that to the side and we'll go ahead and remove the switch. Yeah, that's going to need to be cleaned up. Just making sure there's nothing weird about it. So to remove these bearings, we're going to drive them from the inside out. And just need to gap those two pieces of two by four enough that the bearing can fall through. And I'm just using a wood block here or a wooden dowel. And there we go. There's the bearing. And you can see the lip in there that the bearing rests on. And this is the threaded side that had that bearing retainer nut. So this is the left side now. And it did not have the bearing retainer nut. There's no threads there. But there is a lip in there. So again, this bearing has to be driven from the inside out. Wooden dowel. Smack it. It'll come out. And on this side, we have a shim and a spring washer and then the bearing. And I should point out that uh, these bearings have an extended inner race, but it protrudes from both sides equally. So there's no special orientation for the bearings. So next we're going to go ahead and disassemble the twin lights and I'm only going to show you one of them so that you know they're both exactly the same so this is the wire cover and it has three screws in it so after that third screw is out we can just lift up that wire cover like so So next we can lift up each one of the, uh, the receptacles for the bulbs. These are bayonet style bulbs, meaning they have two little nubs on the sides of them. And then the wiring itself, but to remove the wiring we've got uh, a wire clamp plate. up near the top and so it's got two screws on it we need to remove pop that off of there and then we can just lift the whole wiring harness right out of there so we will be redoing all of that wiring and there is a shield or an insulator on that center screw. I think it's more just to help guide the long screw that goes in there. So I couldn't remember how to remove these uh, the spring clips that hold the glass in the eye shields. So this one I kind of manhandled out. Uh, you know, I kind of forced it out with the screwdriver. And then I remembered, hey, wait a minute. So really all you need is a flat, uh, flat nose pair of pliers to kind of grab onto that little nub that's sticking out there. And you can kind of just wiggle it loose. And that spring will come straight out of there. Way easy. And there's one of the glass shields, eye shields. And that is the disassembly of that. And the other one disassembles the exact same way. 
So here we are at the base again, and I'm removing the two panel screws that hold the brass little BC16 or whatever it was on the front. Unfortunately, the, uh, the serial number plate, the holes don't go all the way through the casting. So we'll have to figure out that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and disassemble the governor on the uh, rotor. And it's got two springs that hold it together. And then I'm going to use a pair of pliers and I'm just going to bend that bracket a little bit to be able to get those two governor finger things out of there. That's one side. And then here's the other side. Like so. And then we can lift off the plastic piece. And there's an insulator on there, a little piece, white piece of paper, kind of like a paper washer. We can slide off of there. And that is completely disassembled. So one of the ways to remove panel screws if they're blind, if there's no hole for the back side of them, is to basically just use a cutoff wheel on a Dremel and make it a slot head so you can get a flat tip screwdriver on there. And it's probably best to go ahead and mask around the panel before you try that so you don't mar the panel up, which I did. But you, I'm going to end up doing the same thing for the stator band for the uh, grinder motor panel as well but the problem that I ran into here is these panel screws are smaller than the ones that I've seen on a lot of the Craftsman motors and that kind of stuff so there's really not a whole lot left of that head when I try to cut that slot in them so as soon as I stick that screwdriver on there and try to start turning it half of that head just disintegrates. So at this point, really the only way we're going to get these off is to drill the heads off of them and then slide the panels off and then we'll drill through the remainder of the panel screws and clean out the holes that they're actually in. So this is how I'm removing the heads. There's probably a better way to do it, but this is where I, my brain was at at the time. And this panel I really don't care that much about because I had a replacement panel made for it, but the serial number panel I want to preserve as much as possible. So once you've got the heads removed, or most of it removed, you can probably pry the panel off without bending it up too much, like that. And there we go. So then what I want to do is I'm just going to use this chisel to knock that remainder of the panel screw flat as possible. And here we are working on the serial number panel. And it's really hard to tell the difference between the panel screw and the panel now because everything's shiny metal. So Hey, I've got a bunch of drill presses. I may as well use them. And this worked out good. 
once I got those uh, panels off, I switched to a smaller drill bit, the same uh, diameter drill bit as the new panel screws that I'll be using to mount all of these panels. And I re-drilled all the holes so that uh, when it comes time to remount everything, it'll go a lot smoother. And for the holes for the panel screws in the base here, I went ahead and drilled all the way through the base. So it would just be easier if I ever had to remove that panel again. Obviously for the stator, we couldn't do that. So they're just the regular depth. So once we got the heads off, I was able to get the panel off with uh, this scraper. And like I said, we drilled out the new holes. So here we are drilling the holes in the stator. I love that float lock vise, man. That thing is awesome. Just makes life so much easier. So, next thing I wanted to do was clean up that uh, tool rest that had that welded block in it. So, here I am just cutting it along that weld line. And then for that back edge, I'm just going to use a cutoff wheel on my Fordham, which is basically the same thing as a Dremel. And then we're just going to pop it out of there with this chisel. And it's probably just going to be easier to just smack it out of there. There it goes. So now we're just going to clean up that edge with uh, this one inch belt grinder. Yes, I know I'm not on the table, but so after we cleaned both of them up, that's what they kind of look like. So the one on the right where it's got some gaps there was the one that never had the weld on it. So the last thing we're going to do on these, uh, these two wheel covers, inner wheel covers, is remove the screws that are on the top of them that the twin lights mount to. And you just need a pair of vice grips. And you can pop that sucker loose and then turn them out of there. Too easy. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to soak everything in simple green. So I'm just throwing it all in this. Well, I ended up using several different uh, plastic bins. Uh, there was a method to my madness, but I couldn't explain it to you now if I tried. And all these parts, except for the panels, are going to get soaked in simple green. And it's going to help tear off a lot of that paint. So normally I soak stuff for about 24 hours, but uh, this stuff ended up soaking for like a week and a half to two weeks. Um, I wanted to get as much of that paint off as I could, and I had a bunch of other things going on. So I wasn't able to get back to work on this stuff until then. But that's going to wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like and subscribe. In the next video, we'll be cleaning up a bunch of these parts. And as always, I appreciate the support and I will see you next time.